alumni, Hall of Famers, our 2016 inductees, and their family and friends. Tonight we will induct four individuals the William Ackman Memorial Athletic Hall of Fame, which was founded back in 1995, honoring the most celebrated athletes of Concordia University, Wisconsin. Our list of inductees tonight include an all-around athlete in Don Becker, played basketball, football, was part of the track and field teams from 1961 through 1965, that at our junior college, but also at Concordia Senior College in Fort Wayne. We will honor Bethany Hepner Irish, who was a four-time All Lake Michigan Conference honoree in women's soccer. She wrapped up her soccer career by helping lead the program to its first NCAA tournament appearance, that year scoring 16 goals, including three hat-trick performances. We will induct Adam Rollinger, a three-time All Lake Michigan Conference honoree in baseball, including being named the Conference Player of the Year in 2006. He helped the baseball team make an improbable run back in 2004. They won the Lake Michigan Conference Tournament Championship, and that program also qualified for the first time ever to the NCAA Tournament. As a team, our sixth team will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's the 2006 football squad. They went 10-0 during the course of the regular season, which included a very impressive Week 2 non-conference double overtime win at North Central. They were a top 25 team at the time, but that team in the regular season won on average by 24 points a game as they were able to bring home the Illini Badger Football Conference Championship. They also earned the right to host an NCAA Division III playoff game. We will also honor Trey Cox. He was inducted to the Hall of Fame last year, but was unable to be with us in person. He is here with us here this evening, and we are excited to celebrate his great athletic accomplishments, which included playing three sports, as between 1982 and 86, he played baseball, basketball, and golf. But well, before we get to the induction ceremonies, I'd like to welcome up the president of our university, Reverend Dr. Patrick Ferry, who will lead us in prayer and also give us a university update. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Matt, and I appreciate your presence here as always, the, the famous and sometimes infamous uh, Matt Menzel. <laughs> but what a, what a great blessing he's been to our, our athletic program. You know, there, there are a number of these occasions where I'm called upon to do two things. One of them is to pray and the other is to speak. And then sometimes I forget to pray. So we're going to pray first. <laughs> Let's pray. Gracious God, what a glorious day and uh, a day to celebrate. And we celebrate uh, all of the ways in which you bless us. Your goodness abounds. Uh, we thank you for uh, this occasion where we can look back with uh, great uh, joy and fondness at accomplishments of student athletes uh, and, and to remember the, the ways in which you use them and their gifts to, to glorify you and to, to also represent this university. We thank you for them. And not only for their accomplishments as student athletes, but, but more than that, Lord, the ways in which they uh, continue to fulfill this university's mission, uh, serving you, Lord Jesus, in the church and in the world. And we ask your continued blessing upon them and upon us all, uh, that all we do, we do to your glory for Jesus' sake. And so bless our, our time together in his name. Amen. Amen. So it's always a, such a wonderful uh, opportunity to, to, to come to an event like this and to, uh, to remember uh, the great teams and the great performers uh, and uh, uh, to acknowledge those achievements uh, of each of you who are being enshrined, inducted to our Hall of Fame today. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a small thing to be put into any sort of Hall of Fame. And, and, uh, and when you've accomplished what you have, and to be recognized by your alma mater in this way, uh, well, I, I hope you think it's a, a, a meaningful tribute. We certainly are very proud of you and, and what you've done. This is, my, this is my 20th, starting my 20th year as president at Concordia. It's hard to believe how fast time goes by. And uh, in my 26th year on campus, I know that, that makes me a novice compared to Val, but nevertheless, uh, that's, a, that's a long time to be here and, and to go to a lot of games and to watch, uh, watch performances and, and I have to say that, uh, that as, as I've observed through the years, Concordia has, has done very well. I mean, we have, we've always been very competitive uh, within our conference and we've achieved a lot. 
And, and uh, that's something that we take great pride in. It's, 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 it's good, it's important, it's, it's useful. Um, when I talk to our coaches, I, I emphasize to them that, that uh, above all, of course, we want them to, uh, uh, to emphasize our mission, that we have to do that well. That, that's, that's, a, that's something that we would, would never compromise. But at the same time, I'd also like for all of the other teams in our conference to, to wonder, why is Concordia in this conference anyway? You know, they're su such a juggernaut. They're always, and we don't always achieve that. Uh, I hope we always achieve this. But, but in any case, uh, those of you who are being recognized today helped us in every way. And, and we want to want to commend you for that and congratulate you for, for that achievement. By way of update, you know, uh, how many of you haven't been here for a while? How many of you haven't been here, let's say, in the last two or three years? Are there other the folks like that? Well, maybe longer than that. Uh, so uh, welcome back to campus. Uh, uh, things continue to change and we continue to grow. Uh, we've certainly been blessed by uh, the Lord in, in so many ways in the, this campus, in our infrastructure, in our programmatic offering. And we're looking forward to, uh, to many new things uh, in, the, in the near future as well. Our, our, up, our up and coming uh, addition to the campus is we're still in the midst of a, of a fundraising effort to, to, uh, to build a new academic building, uh, which would sort of mirror the, the School of Pharmacy that you saw when you came in. It would be the, uh, the facility that would house our School of Business and, uh, and also some of our health care programs. It might surprise you to know that uh, Concordia's MBA program is the largest one in the state of Wisconsin, larger than UW's, larger than Marquette, larger than UWM. We have more students studying for the MBA here than others. And, and the business school is our largest school on campus now. Uh, but place alongside it, of course, our, our healthcare programs, our School of Education, uh, the School of Arts and Sciences, and, and we're grateful for the ways in which Concordia has continued to grow. Some of you might know, too, that within the last few years, uh, Concordia also expanded. We took over uh, the responsibility for our sister school in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And, uh, and so Concordia University now is one university with two residential campuses. Uh, we have uh, the campus here and the campus there in, the, uh, in Ann Arbor, which, which interestingly was uh, uh, voted the number one college town in all of America by Forbes magazine. And that's directly attributable to Concordia. You know, so. <laughs> It, uh, the relationships, of, of course, a wonderful one. I think there are times when, when it, it's awkward for me when the, the two schools play each other. So if, if you've ever been a parent and have had to watch your children compete and, and maybe compete against a sibling, it's a, it's a little bit like that. Um, there, we try not to emphasize the point that uh, in nature, uh, falcons consume cardinals, but uh, that's true. Uh, there are times when, uh, when it can become, uh, uh, well, I'll just, just give you one quick little example here. Uh, last year at CIT, the, we were playing at the Ann Arbor campus, and it was the men's game. The men's games have all been really remarkably, remarkably competitive. And uh, uh, we played, the, the, the CUW played the Concordia Ann Arbor team in the first round. And uh, unfortunately for our CU Dub fans, uh, we fell behind late in the game. Now this, this, this was after very raucous back and forth between the home fans and our fans, lots of yelling back and forth. And then late in the game when it, when it appeared that Concordia Ann Arbor was gonna pull away with the, the victory, uh, the fans there began to shout, as you sometimes hear at games like that, we can't hear you, we can't hear you. And as if on cue, the CUW fans uh, responded, we still own you, we still own you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I didn't know what to say then either, but. Uh, but uh, it's, it's been a great blessing and, and uh, the ways in which uh, the Lord is continuing to work in and through, uh, uh, through your alma mater uh, continue to, uh, to uh, amaze me. And I'm grateful uh, for the privilege of serving here in this place. I know you have to throw out the first pitch we want to get you out there on time. Is Gabe speaking? I don't know. Uh, oh, okay. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to finish then. Uh, I'm going to hand it off to, uh, to our athletic director, Rob Barnhill, uh, my great friend and colleague. Would you please welcome Rob? Uh, good evening, uh, or good afternoon. Welcome for our alumni that are here. Welcome back. Uh, this is one of my favorite times of the year, one of my favorite events, 
as we get together and we celebrate excellence and we recognize greatness. Those of you that are being inducted tonight uh, were highly accomplished in your sport of choice and you truly exemplify what it means to be Concordian. So on behalf of the 700 student athletes, our coaching staff, uh, we acknowledge your presence here tonight and we thank you for being here and, and we're proud of you and look forward to your, your induction here later. Uh, athletics has grown since most of you were here, uh, both in, in depth and in breadth. Uh, when I took over, I think we had five full-time staff people and, and, and we could meet in, in a small little room. Uh, now we have to meet in here because we're up to 50. Uh, we, we had a couple of hundred, 250, 300 student athletes. We're close to 800 now. Uh, we've added eight sports. This fall, we welcome uh, two new teams, field hockey uh, and triathlon for women. So we're excited about that. I know nothing about either one of them. Uh, I'm learning. The, they were painting the field the other day, and the maintenance guy says, hey, is this arc that, that goes from here to there, is it measured from the center line or from the corner? I said, hey, man, I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. You're going to have to call somebody else. Uh, but we're excited about that, so we look forward to seeing those kids on campus, and, and that'll be fun. As Pat said, we, we take great pride in, in being successful in athletics here. I ask my colleagues all the time, what, what is your definition on your campus of athletic success? And, and a lot of times I get some quizzical looks back uh, because they haven't defined it. We're, we're here, we, we have a definition. We're expected to be among the top three in each of our sports, in each of our conferences, year in and year out, competing for championships, winning some, and, and finding our way into national tournaments. And by and large, we, we do a really good job of that. Uh, this past year, we, we won several championships. <laughs> Uh, the regular season championships in men's and women's soccer. Women's tennis won the regular season championship and then qualified by winning the conference tournament to go to the national championships. Women's basketball is a regular season champ. Women's lacrosse won the regular season. We hosted the lacrosse tournament here, uh, and they won the championship and were able to go to the nationals. That's back-to-back -back for them. Uh, we had three indoor athletes qualify for nationals in indoor track, and we had uh, two qualify in outdoor track, and we had a female pole vaulter who was a two-time All-American, uh, both in indoor and, and outdoor. Uh, in men's lacrosse, men's tennis, women's indoor, and men's outdoor, we finished second in our league. And then wrestling sent uh, two wrestlers to nationals this year. So looking back on it, we had, we had a successful year. We, we feel good about it. Uh, Two years ago, I had to give a, 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 a speech like this or a talk like this to the Board of Regents, and I, I put the list together, and I realized we had finished second 12 times. Well, that's not a championship. That's still great. That means we were real close. So I think we're, 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 we're achieving the goals, the, the things that Pat's put out there for us, the, the, uh, the, the bar that he wants us to, to hit. We're doing pretty good there. Uh, we're excited about the changes that we've made. If you haven't had a chance, those of you who haven't been out to CAPCO, our, our most recent addition is just beautiful. Uh, the renovation that we did to the football stadium with the parking structure is outstanding. Uh, we, have, we, we redid the track for those of you that were, were here back in the day uh, and remember the disrepair that thing was in. Uh, we have new tennis courts across the street, and that's, that's been a, a blessing for us as well. Uh, all, we've updated a lot of our facilities. Unfortunately, however, we've also outgrown a lot of them. Uh, with 700 kids in the program, the day we opened the, the weight room, it was obsolete. Uh, we have more attendance in our strength and conditioning programs now than we've ever had. We run four weekly sessions uh, for strength and conditioning in the field house where there are 200 kids in each, se in each session. And, and it's fun to walk in and look because you've got cheerleaders and acro tumblers running alongside offensive tackles in the drills and, and they're moving around in stations and they, there's a lot of, uh, of socializing that happens but but it's good they're starting to meet other people and and uh, they're working and they're sweating and they're having a good time and but but they're they're they're, they're fraternizing and uh, they recognize the hard work it takes to to achieve the goals that that we set out for them uh, I'm excited later tonight, uh, Andy Locke from our advancement office and I are going to talk. He had a great meeting on Friday. Uh, we've been in conversations with a donor about the potential of finding uh, the resources 
to build some type of indoor facility. What that, how that will materialize is, is up in the air. It can be one of two things. But uh, we, we did pin down the donor, or closer to it, last week, uh, and, and he, he made a verbal commitment to us. And then we just had another pro uh, really positive conversation Andy did on Friday. So hopefully in the next six to eight weeks, we'll have something really positive to say uh, about the future of, of that uh, facility as well. We'd like to, to be able to take all of our field sports in the winter, January, February, March, and move them out somewhere else to leave that as a basketball and wrestling venue. Get the baseball, the softball. Uh, it's funny, the lacrosse kids and the baseball kids are in there and the window gets broke. And nobody knows how it happens. <laughs> and you ask the baseball guys, the lacrosse guy, you ask the men's lacrosse guys, the women's lacrosse people, you ask the women's lacrosse people, they have no clue. So it'll be good to get them out uh, and give them something else to break, move them over there so they can break their own stuff. But uh, we're, we're excited ab about the future. We're, we're certainly a, a acknowledge and are, and are grateful for our past. You've all been a part of it. And I hope you take great pride and great pleasure in the success that we have because you are every bit a part of it today. You may not walk the halls, but your DNA is all over it. Okay? Welcome back. Have a great afternoon, and, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you very much. Before we get to the inductions, any current Hall of Fame members in attendance, could you please either stand up or raise your hand so we can acknowledge your presence here today? <laughs> Welcome back and thanks for coming. And now it is time to induct the newest class of the Athletic Hall of Fame. First up, Don Becker, being presented by Coach Chuck Finke, inducted into the Hall of Fame back in 1997, and Coach Paul Nauman, a 2001 Hall of Fame inductee. In uh, 1958, when I came to Concordia, the school only had, they had two basketball teams. One was called Varsity One and one was called Varsity Two. Varsity One was made up of freshmen and sophomores in college and the seniors in high school. They were playing against college kids. And in Varsity Two, they were the juniors, the sophomores, and the freshmen in high school. In that school year of 58-59, the school decided they were going to make a change and they were going to actually have a separate high school because they never even had their own graduation. And so they were going to have be a separate entity and the college was going to be a separate entity. And so in that first year of 59 to 60, we had our first high school varsity basketball team. Getting in there so late, we had a hard time getting games. We could only get 12 games onto the conference schedule. Uh, and Don Becker came into our school as a junior in high school and was a part of that, of that team. Don was a really wonderful student athlete to work with. He was very laid back. The kids loved, all loved him. But he had a classic jump shot. I mean, his elbow was in, his wrist was gone, and his shot was always classic. And he could come popping out and shoot on the elbow and, and, make some ba and make some baskets for us. And so he was a valuable part for two years of getting our high school program off the ground. He went on after that. Paul's going to talk a minute about what he did for us in, our, in his college years. But then he went on and he played for two years at the senior college in Fort Wayne. And then he played down for Coach Peterson at the seminary in St. Louis. And Don is very even talked about the fact that when he got out into the ministry and up in Idaho, he won three championships playing in the municipal basketball league up there. So he was very proud of that. But yet he was he's such a humble individual. I hadn't talked to Don for years. And we called him on the phone a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about this. And I said, Michelle called and she said, hey, there's somebody here I want you to talk to. 
And I said, hi, this is Coach Finke. And I hadn't talked to him for almost 50 years. <laughs> I think, according to Ron, he thinks that I, had, I was deceased, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but he goes like, oh my goodness, a voice from the past. <laughs> And he re started talking, but then he said when it got to this award, he was so humbled by this and so characteristic for him, he immediately said, when I think of people that are going into the Hall of Fame, and he started naming off a couple of ball players that played with him. And he said, those are the guys that should be in the Hall of Fame. I didn't want to tell him that neither one of those guys he mentioned were in the Hall of Fame, <laughs> but he is, and he deserved to be there. Paul, tell him a little bit about what he did for you in college. Well, uh, first of all, let me tell you that in those days, the athletic department was Chuck Finke and Paul Nauman. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was in our hands. We taught all the classes in physical education, and we coached everything that we could provide. Plus, we had a big intramural program. That's where the students all stayed on campus, so we provided them with activities. Now, uh, Chuck and I, 59 till 68, when I moved out to a different school system, uh, we had a terrific experience. I don't care how big the campus is, I don't care how many players you have or how many coaches you have, the sports still are the same. And let me tell you right now, Don Becker, I can still remember when I saw him, I got the letter sent to me, I live up in northern Wisconsin, and I saw Don Becker, and I can just remember him as a quiet, good, solid player. But you got to remember in those days in basketball, no three-point no three shots, no bonus shots. Everything was played basketball the old-fashioned way. And it, it was different, much different than it is now. He, I think it was the leading scorer. I think I was told that he was the leading scorer. I, I, I don't remember where the records are. I don't think Concordia kept those records. Maybe they, they have them here somewhere. But he was one of our better ball players over those years. I took over in 59 as the college basketball coach, the junior college, and our schedule consisted of junior colleges that we could find in the Milwaukee area and outside, but we played a number of four-year colleges too. And you know, the disadvantage there would be tremendous in most cases, but we played them. It was just a basketball game. We did well, sometimes we won, and as, as uh, uh, the other uh, gentleman said, uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But if you put up a good performance, great. Anyway, Don Becker also, uh, we started a football program. About two, or year, two years after I got there, uh, I was a football player in college and talked Chuck to talk to the athletic people on our, our school, in our school. Let's get football started for those boys. They need something. So we got football, and Don played football. We also had track, and we did not have a track at Concordia, if anyone remembers where that campus was. It was a, just a vacant lot that we practiced on. And Don was one of the track uh, players there, and also football. No football field. We had to travel to a public park to practice. And so things were changed quite a bit different. Just ironically, I was thinking here about, somebody mentioned Falcons versus, what's the team out in Ann Arbor? Cardinals. 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 That Falcon, uh, about two years after I was at Concordia, we were looking for a symbol, so I looked at that Atlanta Falcon oh. symbol, and I brought it in, which Chuck and I talked about, we said, yeah, we can make that the Concordia Falcon. And so that's where the Falcon symbol came from. You know, it's like the Atlanta Hawk symbol. So anyway, uh, things, things uh, were so different, but athletes were the same. They wanted to play just like anything else, and you wanted to coach them. We put in a lot of time with these kids, but I'll never regret it. I'll never regret the background that I've got from Concordia. I can still remember old Dr. Stunkel, Prexy Stunkel, saying to us one time, you're always constantly challenged, and that means everywhere you go. And in sports, it's constantly challenged. And that stuck with me all through my other coaching days and all through my other teaching days till I retired. And still right now, we're still constantly challenged in everything we do. So uh, Ron Meyer... This is another story here. I, up in northern Wisconsin, I'm in my church, our church one day. Our pastor's gone, but he's substituting. I don't know if you remember this. He looked over the, the church and he said, I know your other pastor says hello to everybody by name, 
but I don't know anybody here except my old football coach back there, Paul Downey. Remember that, Ron? Sure. <laughs> so Don, this is what it says on Don's plaque. Donald Becker was one of Concordia's original all-around athletes in basketball, football, and track and field during his career. He garnered varsity letters in basketball his junior and senior years at Concordia High School, as well as during his freshman and sophomore years at Concordia Junior College. Becker played basketball at Concordia College High School from 59 to 61 before competing at our junior college from 61 to 63, leading the team as their captain. The talented athlete then played at Concordia Senior College in Fort Wayne from 63 to 65 as part of the starting five his junior and senior years. He continued at Concordia Seminary St. Louis in 65 to 69, leading his intramural basketball team to two championships. He later served as parish pastor at Zion Lutheran Church in Burley, Idaho, where he won three basketball league and tournament titles. And Becker also served the Lord at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Minden, Nebraska from 1974 to 2014 before retiring. Inducted July 30, 2016. Thank you. So, Donald, on behalf of Donald, here you are. You guys stay here a second. Uh, I need somebody to hold this while I talk. Okay. I, there's three people in this room who know, who personally, and maybe there's more, but I don't think so, personally knew that guy. Right? Yeah. You bet. Yeah. How about that? That tells you how long we've been around. I said to Don on the phone, Don, I am going to receive that award in your behalf. What do you want to say? It took him five days to figure out what he wanted to say, and now you hear it. Thank you. you can take okay. that with you. Okay. What a great, great surprise it was. What an incredible and humbling honor. It is to be selected as a 2016 William C. Ackman Memorial Athletic Hall of Fame inductee. When I first set foot on the campus of the old Concordia High School and Junior College in the fall of 1959 to begin my junior year of high school, William Ackman was alive and well, serving as Dean of Students. He got to know me as a tall, skinny kid, leaving behind a high school with over 3,000 students in the western suburbs of Chicago in Franklin Park, and entering an all-male Concordia High School of about 400, and up until then, no high school varsity basketball teams. You heard that story. What a transition it was, Don says, from so big to so small, but true to my love for the game of basketball, while I knew I was stepping out in faith on the long road to becoming a Lutheran pastor, it wasn't long back in those days, 59, 63, that I was in the old Concordia Gymnasium Actually, we called it gymnasium. Practicing, playing buckets at every chance. I will always be grateful for the opportunities I had to be among a talented group of players coached by coaches Chuck Finke and Paul Nauman, who helped us take on all kinds of better teams and slowly improve ourselves from one year to the next. No big winning records or special awards to brag about, but a lot of good, good basketball. Practices and games, all were a great blessing in my life. For the better part of 10 years, I played varsity basketball for Concordia teams, and I remember them as teams that played together under good coaches. I extend my sincere apology for not being present in person to Dr. Robert Barnhill and Michelle Wagner and all those who were involved in the selection process to nominate me for induction into the Hall of Fame. And my thanks to former classmate, teammate, and old friend Ron Meyer to accepting this honor on my behalf. In these years of my life, I have had to deal with a slow recovery from large B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It arrived in 14, and while recovery is going well, it leaves me with back and leg issues that make it hard for me to travel long distances. If any of our five grandchildren, ages 13 to 18, asked me to show them how to shoot free throws that I could probably manage. But that's about it. No more dribbling, no more jump shots, no more boxing out. 
Thank you to all who are involved with and help support the William C. Ackman Memorial Athletic Hall of Fame, and glory be to God for the blessings he gives us to be blessings to others. Thank you. Our next inductee is Bethany Hepner Irish, who's being presented by current women's soccer head coach, 2002 Concordia grad, Ryan Middendorf, a 2013 Hall of Fame inductee. Looking back on, on past experiences, it's all, always awesome to me and inspiring to me how God puts people in exactly the right place, at exactly the right time, surrounded by exactly the right people. So I'm, I'm going to share some quotes from some of Bethany's teammates in just a, a few moments, but it's great to see Bethany's family here. Um, her dad I haven't seen in ages, so it was great, great to see him. Um, everything I've heard of Bethany since, since she's left. Um, here is how tremendous of a mother she is. So it's great to see her kids. Um, it's great for them to see her in a different light, in a different arena than mommy, right? We get to brag about her a little bit. So maybe they can think back and remember to some of these, these great, great things we're going to talk about here in a moment. Just to provide a little background, our women's soccer program began in 1994. Um, at that time, when we first started, uh, players were literally picked from the cafeteria to go out and play the games those, those days. And they won. They won a lot. But in general, across the United States, women's soccer and girls' soccer began growing through the 90s and the early 2000s. It seemed every little girl was playing soccer, eating orange slices at halftime, eating popsicles afterwards, all that stuff that, that you hear about and all the soccer moms were created at that time. Bethany was among that generation. She came to us in, in 2001 at a time when all of the other colleges were starting to catch up to us. Concordia was good, but they were starting to catch up. In Bethany's freshman year, they were nine and five. I had an opportunity to watch that team as I was just finishing up my career here uh, with our men's team. So they were pretty solid, pretty good. Sophomore year, two and 17, rough one. Everyone had surpassed Concordia, but Bethany remained. I also had the opportunity to watch this team quite a bit. I was the assistant coach for the men's team at the time. With any disappointing season comes all sorts of different emotions. Some stayed, some left. Bethany stayed. God placed her here to be a cornerstone of what was about to happen to the program. University hired a, a young, wet behind the ears, 23-year-old coach. Um, there was a tremendous group of freshmen that just showed up somehow. Tara's here, she was in, in that group. There was an inspiring and tremendous group of leaders that joined our program out of nowhere. They were on campus and they just decided to play. And what a blessing to have them join the group as well. As a young team overall, we needed Bethany to show us the way. We needed Bethany to lean on. I watched her constantly, how she interacted with her teammates, how they leaned on her and how important she was to all of her teammates. All of these years later, later, I've coached the team since, I've never been more impressed with a player. She was obviously an extraordinarily talented player, and that's displayed through everything you can read about in, in the little write-up. But she's also all the other little things that make her the impactful player that she was. Her junior year, the nation's largest turnaround, 12 and 10, her senior year, arguably the most successful and best team that we've had here in the young women's soccer program's history. 14-6-1, undefeated in conference play, conference championship, conference tournament championship, and a national qualification to the NCAA tournament. All in a two-year window. And all of it was because of Bethany. I've watched her coach every single women's soccer player here since 1998, so I missed four years in there but there's never been a more impactful and important player to our program's history. Now for the quotes. These weren't prompted in any way. All that I did was just messaged a few of Bethany's teammates um, and said, tell me something about Bethany. 
So there's zero prompting to this, but you'll see a common theme throughout. Within 10 minutes, I had all of these responses. And again, that's how important she was to these, these players. Sarah Sturm. I remember Bethany as fast as lightning, someone you could count on, on and off the field, a spectacular leader, and she had the kindest heart. Josie Ozarumba. Beth Bethany was consistent and a true team player. Anna White. Bethany was the epitome of hard work. Whenever I saw her going hard, it pushed me to go harder too. She was kind and accepting of everyone. A great leader and fun, too. I remember her great smile and laugh. Kristen Rowe. She was a reliable teammate, both on and off the field. She always showed great strength and passion for the game of soccer. Daria Klotz. She, she was always kind and friendly, a great captain. Bethany Grass, our assistant coach at the time. My favorite motivational quote is called, Hold the Rope. I think Bethany was the one who held the rope. She's a great leader, teammate, friend, inspirational, had a ton of integrity, and never left her teammates go unthanked for their roles. Tara Palmrider. Bethany always demonstrated her faith and values through her words and actions. She was always easy to talk to and friendly, even to underclassmen. She didn't make me stand up and sing for the freshman initi initiation song during training camp, and I was extremely thankful for that. <laughs> Not that we did any initiation or anything back then. <laughs> easy there. Amanda Seppinen. Looking back, Bethany turned out to be more than a prolific goal scorer and dependable team leader. She was a cornerstone of an entirely new soccer program. I suspect she was the first one to see our collective potential and to expect our team's vision to become reality. We were all better off because we had Bethany at our side. Missy Jacobs. She was the one that helped build the women's soccer program for the future. She not only spoke amazing words, but her actions also followed those words. She was an outstanding teammate, but even more an absolutely amazing person. She went from being a leader to an influential women's soccer player, to college graduate, to awesome mom. She is one to be proud of. So with all of that, I'll open the, the podium up here for Bethany, our most Im impactful, most influential women's soccer, program, women's soccer player in our program's history. I don't know how I'm supposed to talk after that, but... <clears throat> I just want to thank you guys all for coming out today. I just know it's a beautiful summer day, and I just am so thankful for all the family and friends that are here today. I will be fast because I'm a quick speaker, and I have four kids, so they know that it's um, be short. Um, I want to take the thank the alumni office and athletic office for putting this all together. I know it's a lot of work, a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, and people that don't respond. So thank you very much for being there. I'm just super, super humbled and very shocked, and um, that I would be being considered for this award. Because um, I don't think I deserve it. All these teammates I've had have just been wonderful. Oh gosh, I'm gonna cry. Um, I also think I got nominated um, because I just paid off my student loans. So I'm pretty sure that could be why I did that. Um, I want to thank Concordia for not only giving me a great education, I got to play soccer for four years. I just love soccer, I just love the game. So I am so thankful that I got to play. Um, also for building my faith. That's more important than any of athletics in our education is just building my faith and that's the cornerstone. So thank you. Um, I want to thank Ryan. Ryan is wonderful and he's just an awesome coach. Um, he was hired my junior year and as he said our sophomore year we only won two games and that's kind of hard to only win two games and you lose 17 after winning stuff. So our morale was kind of low. Um, but he quickly, quickly, quickly turned the team around. And we were, again, right away all, um, to nationals, and we just did so good my senior year. Part of the reason I think we were so good, the turnaround, is he was quite good looking, you know, and you're 19, 20 years old. So we were like, we gotta work hard for him. Um, but he's also just a wonderful coach and overall great guy. So we were, um, truth comes out, no. but. That's why the turnaround. No, I'm just but no. <laughs> no, he was just, he was so good and was great with the young women. And thank you, Ryan. You are so good and you're just phenomenal what you've done with the program here. It is so awesome to see it's women and women's soccer. Um, I'm thankful for all the teammates that came. Tara, I can't wait to see you up here in a couple of years. You are just wonderful. There you are. Tara, thank you for coming. Um, I want to thank my family, especially Carl and Judy. They are just the strongest support system you could ever imagine. And they get to almost every single soccer game far and away and traveled and we're always there even when I could be crabby especially after sophomore year so um, I want to thank my brothers Seth um, Aaron and Nathan um, it's great to have brothers I didn't have any sisters but I have two almost three amazing oh four I have another five amazing sister-in-laws that um, far here today though so thank you for 
um, always pushing me and my brothers and coming to so many games. And Nathan, thank you for being the ball boy for so many years. Um, we appreciate you. And finally, thank you to my husband, Chris. We met here at Concordia, and he survived a lot of soccer games, especially the sophomore year. I'm surprised you stuck around. But um, you were just wonderful, and you gave me four amazing blessings in Kaylee, Brady, Kate, and Brenna. And I'm just so thankful for you and for being the most amazing husband and best friend. So thank you again. Thanks again to everyone for coming. And I'm just very honored and very humbled. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And go Falcons! So. <laughs> Our next inductee is Adam Rollinger, being presented by Dr. Val Kuyper, who for the last 33 seasons has been associated with the baseball program, including 30 years as the head coach. <laughs> Too many comments from the peanut gallery here, okay. Um, Adam, it's good to see you here. Kelly, it's even better to see you here. Uh, I still remember her, you know, you're going to see Capco Park in a little bit. I want you to imagine Concordia baseball without Capco Park and seeing you and your family, all of you. I remember sitting and freezing on the hills and stuff like that. A couple fires might have been going in the, in the barrels out there as well, too. And occasionally you might have even seen me start a fire or two on that field as well, too. But nah, we would never do that. But again, Adam um, comes from a tremendous family. Uh, you see his family wherever you go and whenever we, Adam was around his family, I'm sure they still come to your games and things like that. His uncle Willie in the back as well too is everywhere. If you go to West Bend, the name of Willie Miller is known all over the place over there and it's just a tremendous family um, in, in that regards and stuff. Um, Adam was part of, as Matt said before, the, the 2004 team here that went to the NCAA tournament overcame uh, quite a few challenges in that season as well too but as it as you talk about and think about Adam you don't think about somebody who was rah-rah at all he, heck the speech you're gonna hear in a few minutes will be the most words he's probably ever spoken you know in his entire life because he, he's not he's one of those quiet people and he doesn't say a whole lot and he's gonna be extremely uncomfortable up here I guarantee it um, unless you stopped at the Highland House before <laughs> Which he probably did, yeah, okay. Um, but he's part of that team, and, and I guess when I, I can say, he was probably one of the best teammates anybody could ever have. He, he was always there, he was always working, he's always competitive, one of the most competitive people that you know, and did it quietly. And those are the kind of people that you don't notice a whole lot, but they're probably the most important part and the most important glue that a team could ever have. And it's for those kinds of things that, that I think that without Adam, we wouldn't have accomplished, accomplished any of the things that we, we accomplished that year and the years around when he was here. As, it said, as we said before, as Matt said, he was the Lake Michigan Conference Player of the Year in 2006 and Rookie of the Year in 2003. Um, his pathway here probably should have started in 2002, but that first year he came, he came on campus and within, what, about a month? You were messing around in the dorm, you tore your ACL, right? Remember that? Huh? Yeah, something like that. Something like that, yeah. And uh, he sat out his whole first year here, didn't play. It was very struggling, you know. I, I'm sure he wondered whether or not he was going to stay or whatever else, you know, but he stuck it out and he stuck it out and he stuck it out. I am convinced that Adam, if he would have had, he's had three or four, four ACL surgeries in his time as an athlete here, and he, he stuck it out played through those things, and I am convinced that if he wouldn't have had those things, he would have gone into bigger and better things, not only in this state, but outside of Concordia as well, too. Um, as it, his stats just, you know, he still shows up in the all-time stats leaderboard and I've seven or eight or nine different categories as well, too. Um, what can I say about Adam? But he is the kind of person the kind of, the, the people, the, the person that Hall of Fames were made for. And I am extremely proud. Um, in fact, I think the late Rick Real gave me this. 
at some point, maybe even have it at home, but you get to take it home with you today. But just to show his, uh, the sweet left-handed swing that Adam had. But uh, I'll let you take this one home as well, too. But uh, you might remember, you don't know if you remember that swing or not, but a home run. A home run, yeah. I think it was a pop-up to the pitcher is what I think it was, so more than likely. But uh, Adam, it's with great pride, you know, that I present you and acknowledge your induction here to the Concordia University Hall of Fame. Congratulations. If you want. need to bail you out here on this speech, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Coach Kyber. Uh, you all, you also are a beautiful man too. So, so I sort of <laughs> missed your mustache, but I really didn't recognize you at first. But I'm not sure where that went. But uh, I just want to thank for everyone for coming. Uh, I want to thank or congratulate everyone else: Bethany, Trey, uh, Donald, and uh, the football team. So it's. It's an honor to be up here and be inducted with you guys today. Uh, I also want to thank the Hall of Fame committee, I mean, for voting me in. Uh, like I said, I didn't think I would ever be in, inducted in a Hall of Fame here. I mean, I knew I wasn't that good, but <laughs> Kuiper, I mean, pushed me every day, so I want to thank him for that. Um, I also want to thank a couple other people. Uh, I got two other coaches here that coached me, uh, Doug Gonnery, he was my high school coach for four years and also two years here at Concordia. I mean, Doug was one of the best coaches I ever had. He taught me how to play the game the right way, made it simple, easy, and I want to thank him again for everything. Uh, it also, he picked up his uh, 400th win a couple of weeks, uh, about a month ago, I think now, in his high school career. So. I mean, that's a great accomplishment, Doug. Uh, also, I want to thank Willie Miller. He's actually my uh, uncle. So uh, he coached me one year at Concordia here, my senior year. So I want to thank him. But it actually started when I was first when I could pick up a ball. He was teaching me then. I mean, pitching, hitting. We used to play in our grandma's front yard off the uh, brick wall, too put up strike zone on the brick wall with a ch chalk. And he would, uh, I don't know if you guys know about the movie Major League, but he was in it. He's the Duke. He's the one who threw at his son at the own, uh, he threw at his son at, at the old father-son game. And he's the one that Jake, guy pointed a home run for him and he actually laid down the bunt. And he threw at the guy. So we, every time he pitched against us, we would point like we were gonna hit a home run. And he kind of went, okay. And he would throw it right up, right underneath the chin. So he kind of taught us, you know, stay in there, be tough, and, you know, everything like that. So, and finally, I want to thank uh, my teammates. There's a couple here today. Uh, Andy Steffen, Billy Bynum, Andy Becker. Uh, thank you for everything. Obviously, without teammates, none of the stats would happen. Uh, and I also want to give a special thanks to Billy. has been nominating me for the last 10 years now. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Bill. Uh, also, and then my uh, family and friends. Uh, I have a current teammate, Casey Crone here. Uh, Bart and Rita, thank you for all the things that you do for me now. I, I manage a team now, and I still play baseball for, I'm not sure why, but <laughs> with my knees like this. But I still play, and I kind of manage the team. So um, my family here, I got my brother Ryan, uh, brother Matt, sister Bree, my aunt and uncle. Uh, they're all here, and uh, especially my mom. Uh, mom and sister still come to every game that I play. And they came, like Coach Kuiper said, they came to up on the hill, sitting in freezing rain, snow. We were still playing, uh, even with the gasoline on the field, too. So, so I want to thank you guys for everything and for the love and support that you still give me today and the courage that, for I can still play. So thank you again for everybody uh, for coming. And, uh, that's about it. All right, thank you.
Next, we induct the 2006 football team, and presenting the football team will be the director of athletics, Dr. Rob Barnhill, who was the offensive coordinator of that 2006 squad. My job is to uh, introduce the, the leader of that squad, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, but it's, it's good to look out and see alumni, former players, friends, family. My dad, who got me started in football, is here. He came up from North Carolina. My little brother's here from Arkansas. So that's good to have them here with us today. Uh, in preparation for this event, I went back and watched the 2006 highlight video. And it, it, it brought back a lot of memories. There were some really, really, really good football players on that team. There's some ball playing Jimmies now. Uh, they had, we had some dudes, and it, too many to name, right? Too many to name because you'd leave somebody out. But I, I was, I, I just marveled at it this morning at how great these kids were, uh, both as young men but as football players. And, and, you know, I was fortunate enough to, to coach college football over 20 years, and, and I, I coached here for nine years. And in that time, we went 70 and 20, and we won four championships, and we went to the national playoffs three times, and all of those were great. But the 2006 team was really, really special to go undefeated. To have a winning season is difficult. To win a conference championship is extraordinarily tough. But to go undefeated and do it is almost unheard of. And, and you know, that, that was a testament to the, the great kids we had and the support staff that we had. And uh, I, I look forward to sharing time with those cats here later tonight. But, uh, you know, it started with, with, a, with a, a win here against Simpson College. And, you know, we're supposed to be this, this vaulted, rushing attack. And we threw four touchdown passes uh, and beat them through the air. And then we went to North Central and played them at night uh, in front of like 5,000 people. Their place was packed. And it was a triple over or double overtime win. Uh, as the story gets it's better every time, it's triple overtime next year. But, uh, but, it, was, but it was double overtime. And, and that was a lot of fun. Um, we did have, you watch a highlight video. We had an offensive lineman who, whose brother was, uh, a defensive line, Big Fat Fred and Big Fat John. And, and at the end of the thing, you see when we scored a touchdown, the, the thing was so open that the kid put his finger up and started high-stepping at the 20, and then nobody touched him. Well, Big Fat John's jumping up and down, testing the tensile strength of that uniform with all of his body mass moving inside of it. Um, just like, you know, kids playing the game. But it was fun. That was a great win. We beat Lakeland College and won the Cheese Bowl in the rain. Um, that was a huge one. That was a big week for me. And, and I think probably my wife should be included in this induction um, because that week we were expecting our second son. He was to be born on the Thursday, Friday, Saturday of the Lakeland game. And so in consultation with the doctor, we decided, uh, I should say she decided, that we would go ahead and have her induced on Monday as to not have any contradictions or conflictions with the football game. So all of you mothers in here, I'm sure you would do the exact same thing, right, if you were in my shoes. Um, but the doctor said, hey, he's fully cooked. We can go ahead and do this. So we did it on Monday. We did it on a Monday because we don't practice on Monday. Uh, and she'll tell you the story. She had the baby. They gave it to her, and 45 minutes later, I was back over here for Monday afternoon meetings. But we won the game, so the kid got to go to a, a, a victory party in his own basement at a week old. Uh, that, that, was, that was great. Uh, so she, she should, kudos to her, right, for making that decision. Thank you, Ron. I saw one of the faculty members stop me in the hallway and said, now, do you have a stand-in? I said, well, her mama's going to be here. If anything happens, it'll be all right. This is before we decided to do the, the inducement. If anything happens, her mother will take care of it. Her mother's going to call the football plays? I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to do that. But if anything happens in the birthing room, her mom will be there to take care of it. Uh, but we avoided all that by, by doing the other thing. Uh, and then we, we beat Greenville College out here late in the season. I think that was an overtime game, too. And, and it was great to watch the highlight video because we threw a touchdown pass in that corner late in the fourth quarter, and kids are jumping up and down. And on, and on the video, I don't know if you remember this, Pat, you're jumping up and down in the middle of them. So he's on the field jumping up and down because we won late in the game, and, and that was awesome. And then we beat Benedictine here at the end to seal the thing, and, and our, our punter, I, didn't, I forgot that was a game. He kicked the ball 95 yards. Uh, you know, they, they'd take 20 off of the stats. But, I mean, he kicked it from here to there. Uh, that's unheard of. So, Booming System was here. I'm glad to see him here. 
And that was that was an awesome thing. So we had it was a great year. We had a lot of fun, and and, and you're going to hear more stories like that. So let me bring up now the head football coach and leader of that team, Hall of Fame coach Jeff Gabrielson. Well, see, Rob and I don't have any meetings anymore, because if we did, I would have told him, don't say what you just said, because that's what I was going to say. <laughs> so I, I have this all prepared, and he's going, when he started going up every game, and I go, you I left your five. <laughs> Not the good five. Well, first of all, I want to say congratulations to all the other inductees here. It's such an honor to be inducted into a Hall of Fame. I had the uh, opportunity of where I'm at now of starting a Hall of Fame at the high school level and the gratitude and the how much they were invested in the school that you guys were in here during your time. It, it goes on forever. You bring your kids back to look at the plaques. You do all those things. It, it's such a special honor. So again, congratulations to all the, all the people here that were inducted. <laughs> Our 2016, I'm not quite sure how this was supposed to go because a lot of the guys thought they weren't supposed to come to this. And I, I'm, I'm texting them all, are you going to be there? Are you going to be No, we're going to be the one in the fall. I go, well, I'm talking at the one now. <laughs> I go, well, I had all stuff. You know, everyone's got a story. You know, I was going to make fun of most of them. But uh, uh, anyway, we have a, a great they had a great football program here, and uh, part of that was because of all the players and the coaches. Uh, you don't do it by yourself. You do it as a team. Football is probably the ultimate team sport, where you have basically an offensive unit. You have a defensive unit. You have special teams unit. You have probably 35 to 40 kids that impact the game, whether you're going to be successful or not. Where in basketball, you might have one or two or three on the court. Football, it has to be a team effort. So we had many great teams here at Concordia. I, I coached here for 25 years. Our 83 team, when I first started here, is already in uh, uh, the Hall of Fame. Our 88, 89, and 90 teams were all one loss or undefeated teams. Our, from 2002 to 2007, Rob, we probably could have picked which one of those teams might have been the best team. They were all great teams. Some just achieved a little bit more than others. All right, so a lot of great teams. But this 2016, it was kind of special. We may have had more impactful players on some of the other teams, but this was just the best team. There was just no weaknesses. And it was just such a great opportunity to coach a group of kids like that, and even more fun to watch how they went through the season. Uh, Rob. Stole my thunder with the, uh, uh, it was quadruple overtime. <laughs> uh, it was North Central. They weren't a top 25 team, Matt. They were rated number one in the country at that time. Uh, but it, it, was, it was so funny because we ran a cr crisscross, counter crisscross. And our running back, Mike Simons, he was still 20 yards from the end zone. And had his hand, well, we're on the sideline. I don't mean one thing. He, there's no one in front of him. And it was probably one of the biggest celebrations we ever had. Because, again, uh, uh, they played in a very strong conference, one that sometimes is overrated. Uh, and, uh, but that one, what, they were a great football team. And uh, we took it to them. Actually, I think we were up 17 nothing at half. I mean, we, and we had a chance, I believe, Kasim Duran missed a potential pick six right at the end of the first half. So we really could have put it on them. Uh, but then they, like any good team, they came back and it came down to the end. Um, what I'd like to do here, I, I, I think I talked to everyone and warned them. I'd like every assistant coach that was on the team to come up and all the players to please come up here to the front because this is a team award. All the players, please come on up and the coaches. Okay, now, since Coach Barnhill took all my comments, I'm going to ask every one of you, because football isn't all about wins and losses. Football is about experiences. Most of my memories from all the years I played and coached had to do with relationships. 
had to do with things that you did with your teammates. And a lot of them were on the football field, a lot of them were in the locker room, a lot of them were in the bus, a lot of them were in the dorms or resident halls. All right, but it is so neat to hear what their experience. So I'm going to ask you all very briefly to give one of your special memories of that 2006 season. Why don't we start here with uh, Justin? You can just, just stand in there. We don't have to all come up. Oh, <laughs> well, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. No, Michelle's on a tight schedule. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I guess the, the one thing that comes to mind is, uh, is the, the Greenville game. Uh, you know, it was a double overtime game, but, you know, before it got to that point, uh, late in the fourth quarter, I think our offense had fumbled in the, in the red zone. And, uh, you know, I was going to say, like, you know, our, our, our offense was amazing. They were fantastic. They had really great athletes, but I, I think our defense was indomitable. But I think that's really a testament to Coach, Coach Gabe because I don't think we were as great athletes, and, you know, I'm an example of that. And, uh, but he just had us extremely well prepared. And as an example, in this game, we knew that this guy's last name was Brown. We knew every time he's in the, they came out in this formation in the end zone, they are going to throw a fade to him. So sure enough, we, we turned the ball over, and on the first or second down, uh, they went ahead and they, they went in this formation, and we, I started yelling out. I, was, I played free safety. I started yelling out, Brown, 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 which means we go to a cover two. And as soon as the ball was snapped, I went straight back into the corner of the end zone, and the quarterback threw the ball right to me and intercepted in the end zone. And uh, so that was uh, that was great. Then so. All right, that was one of the reasons why we were on the team. Our, our punter system, Tommy Roberts. Um, my favorite one was it wasn't regarding me at all. It was during the uh, Lakewood game. I think we had a blocked uh, extra point, a blocked field goal. And one of our D linemen, Adam Klosky, went 98 yards oh. back for a touchdown. Um, it was the slowest 98 yards. <laughs> there was a couple guys running next to him saying, give me the ball, give me the ball. And just kept chucking along. So that defense was excellent. It was by far the best team I was ever a part of. So thank you all. Thank you, Tommy. Ben? Um, I hear a lot of talk about the double overtime win at North Central. But what Rob didn't say was that Mike Steinman said his hand in the air 20 yards before the end zone. But before we even snap the ball, Barnell says, game's over. This play's going to win the game. So he, he was calling it before we even snapped the ball. So credit, credit to his play calling. Out there. <laughs> All right. Patrick? Um, I'll have to say, before, the, before, the, before we play our first game, um, my biggest thing was I knew we were going to have a good team because training camp. I remember um, Jay Lou, my quarterback Jay Lou, coming to me, and I, and I saw every 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 day after practice it was somebody quitting, and I'm looking like, what's going on? Like I ain't know so so many guys quit. And they just it, it was competitive. So um, Jay Lou said, just make it through training camp, everything will be all right. And um, sure enough, we went from training camp. At the training camp, we had the what what you call the breakfast. Breakfast Club, 6 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Breakfast with the nasty gravy. And yeah. and at first it was good, and then next thing you know, you don't want to eat that no more. <laughs> stuff. But uh, I just think the combination of the combination of the guys that we had recruited from Florida, from, from here, we had, we just had an overall great team. Overall great team. It was just a great year. Now, if you have video cameras, you'd want to turn them on right now. Because our next person here, I don't know if he can speak. Because he didn't say a word his entire college career. Okay, so this is going to be, go ahead, another man. I remember, uh, I remember the time we played a top 25 team. And there was a, there was a play, there was a time in the game where we ran run play after run play after run play. And then, we, and, then we, and then we scored a touchdown. And I think that game set the tone for the whole season because from, from that we had confidence to, yeah, we had the confidence to win a, a, a championship. So All right. <laughs> Patrick? Well, we already heard about the, the 90, or the 81 yard punt from Tom. And yeah, I remember we were standing on the <laughs> sidelines when you take them off the field. And uh, we were in the uh, offensive group, and, and I think Coach Barnhill was, was hollering at us because we were punting. 
of course. And, and all of a sudden, it was like a cannon had gone off, and we were all like, did somebody shoot, went ball. shoot a gun or something? And we saw the ball was just, and it was like we were from down here, and it was just, it just kept going. So it was, it was amazing. Uh, 95 yards. All right. And now, coach it. Coach Jacoby, what do you have a, a memory of that season? Uh, I guess the, the, the one game that stands out to me, everybody talks about North Central, because again, they're in a, a conference that at times is overrated, but very tough conference. A lot of people talking about we shouldn't have been on the same field with them. We're not in the same class with them. We were leading at halftime, I think it was, and they started a comeback. One of the things that I, I still tell people at the time, everybody complains about the referees. They had a phantom catch that allowed them to continue a drive that tied up the ball game. The guy's on the sidelines, goes like this to reach, and that ball swats off his hands like he's a soccer goalie. Just boom. Their entire stands, their entire sidelines goes, oh, because it's like a third down play. Referee comes running up the sidelines, signals catch. And we're like, no, we're going crazy on the sidelines. They gather together, huddle up, and said, okay, they're going to straighten it out. They left a little break and said, catch. People in their stands, their fans even went, wow, that was bad. But I think it's a testament to the team that we had because you face something like that, a lot of people are going to hang their heads, teams are going to fold. We didn't. I think just fired our guys up a little bit. And again, with the play calling, I think we had a great, great game and uh, finished up strong. Thank you, Coach. Coach Jeff Walker. I want to talk about a little bit about the teamwork that I saw from these guys, and it didn't happen on game day, the story that I'm going to tell, but the, how much this all meant to them this year. For some reason, that ball, it rained, and it rained, and it rained, and it wouldn't stop. And we had two home games to finish off the conference season, to be undefeated, get in the playoffs, and we were questioning if we're going to have an opportunity to play two home games, because our field was saturated. It was getting bad. So what we did as a staff is we went down to Menards and we bought all the tarps we could. The biggest tarps we could find, we bought them all. And after every <coughs> practice, we went up and these guys went up there and they laid out all those tarps, 100 yards of that field, so that we could play and have a chance to win a conference championship at home those last two weeks. That's what teamwork these guys showed. <laughs> Uh, I was an offensive line coach uh, for uh, that season, and I remember the memory that, that stands out to me the most is that uh, I had uh, taken over uh, a very veteran offensive line uh, that were used to being able to uh, uh, be comfortable in doing their, their way of things, and I didn't think that they accepted me as, as well as the new guy coming in, uh, and I, I truly did try to push them hard to be uh, better as individuals, and and uh, they kind of revolted a little bit uh, right in the beginning of the season. And my memory is, and this is no lie, is we're about to take pictures right here on this field, and uh, and I'm contemplating not coaching uh, that year. Uh, and I remember so, talking with Rob and talking with uh, Gabe about you know this group is not really true accepting of of me right now. Uh, and uh, Rob and, and Gabe had a nice you know, firm talk with the guys and, and, and started to become a little bit more accepting of me. And it, and it truly turned out to be a special season. Those guys were uh, not only a veteran group, but they were really exceptionally talented uh, and and did work hard for me for the rest of the season that paid off. Uh, but like Rob said, that was some special guys, not just on the offensive line, but talent up and down in terms of both sides of the ball. And one of the greatest memories that I've had as a coach now that I'm coaching high school football at the fourth, but my time here at Concordia was truly special. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> well, I, again, as you can see, uh, uh, football, like I said, was the ultimate team game, and it, a lot of effort by a lot of people go into not only winning a game, but going undefeated in the season. <laughs> So again, thank you uh, to Concordia for uh, uh, putting these guys in the Hall of Fame. Hope you can all come back in the fall. I guess they're going to do it again over homecoming, uh, and we'll even have more people represented. But again, as coaches, we love you.
A couple other quick notes about that 2006 team. Head coach Jeff Gabrielson inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2013. And a couple of players from that team have individually been inducted into the Hall of Fame. You had John Collier, he was inducted in 2014, and Wilbur Allen, who was inducted in 2015. And as Coach Gabe alluded to, there's going to be a formal induction for the football team, part of the homecoming festivities on November the 5th. So again, we invite everybody back that first week of November for all the homecoming festivities. We now induct officially from the class of 2015, Trey Cox being presented by Dr. Val Kuyper. Um, man, 1982, fall of 1982, um, from the little town, Shelbyville, Illinois, came Trey Cox coming up there. And he, you know, it was my second year of coaching here and it was down at the old campus before we even came out here. And, uh, it was the last year that Concordia was downtown and he moved up after his freshman year. But Trey Cox was somebody that, that um, you know, I have a picture, but we didn't have cameras back then, Trey. So <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I was going to do that. But I, the mic after you, just remember that. I know you do. <laughs> but it, it's, it's to, to be up front, to induct your, to be part of inducting your cousin, you know, into the Hall of Fame is a very special time for me when it, become, when it comes to family. You know, athletes, we're all family. You know, we're, teams are family, but especially here. This evening, it's it's very special to me. Um, Trey was a three-sport athlete here at Concordia, and uh, came here in '82. Played baseball, played basketball for uh, was it Neil Lohmeyer was the basketball coach way back when, and and then uh, after we came out here, Coach Rasmussen, you played for him for three years as well too. But one of the little-known facts about Trey is we, when he came here in '82, we didn't have a golf team here, and that's all Trey did. Trey, if you knew my uncle Frank, Trey, they played golf all the time. And then he comes up here, no golf team. So first year, no golf team. Second year, no golf team. And Trey's younger brother, Todd, was even a bigger golfer than Trey. And so <laughs> my Uncle Frank, in his true negotiating style, he came up here and he told our John Book, if you don't start a golf team, my son's not coming to school here. So in our John Book style, what did he do, Andy? He had uh, two guys on a golf team. We started, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. That next fall, we started a golf team. And so... And so Trey's brother Todd and uh, Trey were part of the first founding members of the golf team here, you know, and stuff like that. It probably, we probably, you know, Rob, it would have happened eventually, but it started a little sooner than we were probably prepared to do. But uh, if not for the Cox family, we wouldn't have a golf team that, as long as we had. So another thing about Trey, too, that uh, it speaks to who he is as a man and as his, and his character is that he came here as a basketball player, started his freshman year on, the ba on one of the worst basketball teams probably we'd ever have. They, I know they were recruiting players after fall break, after after Christmas, out of the out of the dorms and out of the cafeteria because probably if you didn't make their grades, Chuck, you remember some of those teams and stuff, I'm sure, way back when. Um, but, uh, and then coming, and he really was trying to make the decision whether or not to play basketball or come back to Concordia his sophomore year. But then we made the move out here to Mequon. And that's when he decided, and his dad decided for him too, but um, you're coming, but you're not quitting. And then he became part of a basketball program that really set the tone, you know, for what was to come as well, too. Was a captain for two of the three years, at least two of the, maybe all three years. It started as a freshman year. He became sixth man. And it speaks to his character, who he was, because Coach Raff said, you're not doing that. You know, that this is who you are. You help our team more by coming off the bench. And Trey in a selfless way. And if you know Trey, that's exactly who he is. You know, he made that sacrifice for his teammates, and it made his team better. Um, Trey still shows up in some of the record books here. He still, you know, after, you know, gosh, 35 years, Trey. Right. Still shows up in some of the record books for baseball here as well, too. Um, and as it says in the program, too, and I'm just going to keep this short, um, he, he, he's a man who doesn't necessarily lead by his words. You know, what is it with baseball players? They don't talk a whole lot. And he didn't talk a whole lot either as well. But he led by example. And to this day, in what he does, both with his family, in fact, his son Seth will be a freshman here next fall. 
is coming maybe to play golf. We'll see. But he's going to play baseball is always first. Just remember that. But he leads, and his family leads in that way as well, too. And, he, and it's important to him. But if you, if you Google Trey and you find things that he does with his blogs or his comments, he is a man of God. And this is the kind of man that Concordia's Hall of Fame is also made for. Trey, congratulations. Well, I, I wanted to thank, thank two people, first of all, Val, for one, in his, gen, his usual fashion, he didn't tell me that I was going to speak, I just thought I was going to stand up here, get a plaque, and sit down, so thanks a lot for that. <laughs> Secondly, I'd like to thank, uh, is it Adam? Right. Adam, you, you've, you blew it, man. I've, I've been trying to tell my son, I'm from Arizona now, okay? So I'm trying to tell my son, who's thinking about playing baseball, about how wonderful the field is, and you're talking about snow and ice and all this stuff. He may have to change his mind and go play in Arizona or something. But. And then that brings up stories about lighting the field on fire to get the water off so he can play. But anyhow, I, I just want to share uh, something we haven't talked a lot about, and that's about academics here. Um, I, I got my bachelor's degree here in secondary education mathematics. Uh, I have to thank my father-in-law for telling me to come back for my master's degree. I wasn't interested. I was coaching three sports. I was a high school math teacher who has time to get your master's degree, right? And he's like, you need to have that. So I went back. Uh, I wanted to back up Charlie Duff over here. He was my supervising teacher at Grafton High School. And I'm, I still to this day, I teach math. I'm my 31st year this fall. And I mentor a lot of what I, or I do a lot of what I do in the classroom, uh, mentored off after his leadership. I got my PhD at ASU, a school of 70,000, and I went to Concordia, right? And I felt like I was way more prepared for my academic studies for a doctorate degree than any of my classmates because of this. So I think you need to realize as parents and, and having kids maybe come here that this academic uh, environment is second to none. The, the professors care about you as a person. They, they're willing to spend extra time with you. It's, it's just a great environment. Um, we're here about athletics. I did play three sports. Uh, actually, the only reason I'm here is because of sports. I wanted to stay near my hometown in central Illinois, but my father, in his wisdom, he, he's with Jesus now, but he said, I don't want you to stay around home. I want you to go far away. <laughs> you get that, Andy? I don't get that. But he, he was like, you need to go find out what the world's like. I grew up in the town of 3,000. Every single person in the community was white. I didn't know what it was like to reach out to other cultures. It was, it was really wise for him to send me here. But I came for sports, that's why I came. Um, so I played three sports. Uh, I realize now looking back at that time in my life, it was all about me, about what I was gonna do. I didn't care about other people that much. It was about, about me. But through Concordia and the coaches, Wayne Rasmussen and Dr. Kuiper over here, I saw what it was like to uh, not be a John 316. You know what a John 316 fan is in the end zone? Yeah. Old enough, the rainbow wig, yeah. right? Where you have to change who you are as a person. I didn't want any of that. But when I saw men like this around campus, I just saw, hey, you don't have to change who you are to become a Christian. So like, I want to be like Wayne Rasmussen. I want to be like Dr. Kuiper. I want to be like Charlie Duff. That was the biggest thing to me about coming here was, was my spiritual growth. Uh, along those lines, I'm, I'm in my sophomore year at Foundations of Education class, his class. So I'm in my cousin's class, right? And this beautiful girl walks in, and I'm scoping the chicks, right? I'm like, I'm going to sit behind her, right? So I sit behind her. I start flirting with her. He's rolling his eyes in the front of the classroom like, what are you doing to me, man? I have to call you out in front of everybody. She ends up being my wife. See right over here, Janelle. So I'm very thankful to the college for that. Um, so I would like to say that I, I, I uh, bleed blue for Concordia. Um, I kind of failed the university here because my oldest son went to Concordia, but he went to Irvine, the Tiraboo. Yeah. And my middle son went to Concordia, Austin, Texas. Blue, right? But I think I got it finally right because my youngest son over here will, is a freshman this fall at Concordia, Wisconsin. So, yeah. up. Finally, finally worked out. But uh, I, I just love this place. It's wonderful about the athletics. I, I have become a changed person because of that. But the spiritual aspect and the professors that are here, 
I tell all the people at my church, I, I lead the men's ministry at Christ Greenfield in Phoenix, and we have over 100 men that meet. I'm just a volunteer, but I just want them to speed up the process of what took me so long to figure out, and that is you don't have to change yourself to become a Christian. You just need to do what God's called you to be, and I learned that here. So thank you very much. Well, once again, I want to congratulate all the Hall of Fame inductees and welcome officially into the William C. Ackman Memorial Athletic Hall of Fame. I'm going to wrap up our event by bringing up Chris Best, currently a Hall of Fame member, part of the Hall of Fame committee, and the Alumni Association Council member. Good afternoon. Congrats. Adam, Trey, 2006 football team, Bethany. You did a really nice job oh. of keeping it together. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Compared to me a few years ago. And Ron Viadon. Uh, a year ago, we embarked, several of us embarked on forming an alumni council. And Trey, you emulate what we're trying to achieve. We are embarking on trying to connect people to this institution at a deeper level. We have talents that are out there, and we're seeking to get us connected deeper to our faculty, to our students and fellow alumni. Whether you're here in Milwaukee, or whether you're abroad, in California, Carolinas, or wherever you may be. This week, we formalized an Alumni Council Executive Board, and we are seeking people that want to give back their talents, their CUW proud. You may be naturally connected to your coach. You may be naturally connected to your academics. You may be naturally connected to your roommates or your fellow teammates. But do we all know each other? And are we connected and are we giving our talents back? For me personally, I uh, am very CUW proud and I'm in the business community. I graduated with a CPA, a county degree and got my CPA second to none education when I graduated from here in 1993. I seek out where are there other Concordia alums, and I stumble on them. We hope to change that. So we're helping each other, we're connected. So if you have any interest in be part of, of an alumni council, Pastor Rausch is on the board with us, and uh, Michelle is here to be our facilitator on campus. But if you have any interest, please seek me out, or Randy out, or Michelle out. We're looking for proud CUW alumni to connect at a deeper level to our students, to the faculty, and the fellow alum that are around the area. Thank you. Before we say so long to this portion of the night, let's say thank you to a couple of people that helped put this night together, and it begins with Michelle Wagner, the Director of Alumni and Parent Relations. Of course, we have Dr. Rob Barnhill, the Director of Athletics. Steve Schauer, who's in the back, he's the Director of Athletic Communications. And the Hall of Fame Committee, who again helped put all this night together for you guys. For those of you planning to head over to Capco Park with us for the Chinooks game, a quick reminder, you must have a ticket for the game. And there are some extra tickets that are still for sale. You can see Michelle for more information or stop by at the Will Call box office to, to take care of that. There is a fireworks show after the game as well. So note that the game has been moved up about five minutes because length of games have been going a little bit longer lately. And not to disturb the neighbors, we got to get this thing moving a little bit. And so uh, they have moved the game up by about five minutes. And uh, so do note for the Hall of Fame inductees, they're going to be throwing out the first pitch. You need to be on the first base side, get things ready to go around 6.10, 6.15. So you have a little bit of time uh, for that. But we'd also like to have all the inductees and presenters, family members that want to take some photos up here as well in just a few minutes to take some photos and uh, before you head over to Camp Cove Park. With that said, thanks once again for everybody and for coming and uh, enjoy the rest of your night.